All right, are we just about ready to get started here, folks? Oh, it's not working. High tech equipment. Right. Do you wear a ponytail very often? I don't remember you in a ponytail. I don't usually wear it. You don't wear it up high. Yeah. Greasy hair today. Oh. <laughs> I would I'd wear it to ponytail if I, I did. <laughs> Camouflage that. Is that why? Okay. Uh, that works. It's all good. Phones. Yep. All right, 703. We got to get rolling. Okay, we're going to start our meeting. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for God. Okay. Okay, good evening, everyone. Are we recording this evening? Are you going to, you got it going? Okay, great. Well, welcome to the City Council meeting, Monday, June 5th, 2023. If we could have a roll call, please. Luther? Here. Burstead? Here. Sutherland? Here. Yanko? Here. McCullough? Here. Schwebs? Here. Gentz? Here. Solberg? Schlu? Here. Erdman? Here. Sommerfeld? Here. Great. Uh, well, welcome, everybody. Um, uh, we do have a couple of recognitions tonight under special recognitions. Um, I do want to thank a few folks that made it possible for the Wakanda Water Park to have over 1,460 uh, visitors this weekend. Uh, so that was pretty pretty cool. And I think Dave Schofield, maybe you could elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah, I uh, asked Pete uh, Ross to be here tonight and uh, Doug Marco, Greg Stye, Eric Arnold all worked really hard to get the pool up, updated. We had uh, three leaks underneath the slab and we had to cut up to 18 inches of concrete out. Um, make some uh, plumbing repairs, patch that all back together, and it all got done in about a week and a half in order to get the pool open um, for users. So we had um, 573 people on Saturday and another, um, sorry, 757 people on Saturday and another 700 yesterday uh, until an unfortunate accident with a kid's lunch uh, made the, we had to empty the pool. Um, but it, it it was well received and we appreci really appreciate everyone's work, hard work and getting it done. So. Dave, thing. maybe I could elaborate also a little bit. Um, how many gallons did you figure we were losing last year over that leak? Uh, we lost around 2.5 million gallons. Uh, we don't we don't think we got all of them, but we got as many as that were accessible to us from from near the surface. Well, that's pretty incredible. And, and if those individuals that Dave mentioned are here this evening, if you could just stand up or wave your hand or something just to say hey, because uh, we appreciate uh, the hard work and. Uh, It's, uh, you know, we have an incredible team of people out there and, and dedicated people and and to make the water park happen like you did with all that work that went into it just prior to it opening, uh, it means a lot to the community. So thank you. Okay, um, then let's see, uh, David also, um, I think that summed that up. Okay, I think we can move on. Here we go. Uh, approval of minutes. If somebody would like to approve the last meeting minutes, now is the opportunity to do so. Go ahead. I will move to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Thank you, Laura. Is there a second to that motion? Penny? I'll second that. Okay. Motion made and seconded to approve the meetings of the last or the minutes of the last meeting. All in favor of said minutes or said motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Going to be a tongue twister tonight. Um, Tonight, under public hearings, we have a proposed zoning ordinance amendment at 1416 Brickyard Road for Corey Bus uh, from Agriculture uh, District res Restricted Industrial to I-1. Uh, it went through Plan Commission, and they approved it. And I'll let uh, Dave Schofield take it from here. David? Yeah, this uh, this may seem like Groundhog's Day, but I assure you it's not. So Mr. Bus was before us approximately a month ago to look at rezoning the same parcel from A to I-3. Uh, the council uh, elected not to to do that zoning, and so we kicked it back to uh, A or to I one. Went back through plan commission, and here we are tonight. Um, the plan commission did recommend approval on a five to two vote. Um, the I think if I can 
Lee may certainly jump in and, and explain where I'm lacking in this, but in my recollection is there was some concern that not all of the adjacent land is is in the I-1 zone, uh, and it sets a precedence for other things that might go on adjacent to that parcel. Um, that was those were the the two no votes um, with respect to that. The there was a public hearing notice that was sent out to residents within 350 feet, and it was pu published in the newspaper. Residents may uh, wish to speak here and, and afterwards under the next agenda item would be when you would consider approval of the annexation ordinance. Okay, thank you, Mr. Schofield. Um, so that we would open up the uh, public hearing portion at this time. If anybody would like to speak under public hearing, uh, please come up to the podium, give us your name and address, sign in and um, push the button down so that the microphone would come on. So at this time we'll open up the public hearing. Uh, Corey Bliss, 451 Amberview Street. Um, I'm the one proposing the change. Uh, we would use the lot to move our screen printing embroidery business from what's currently my shop at my residence to this location. Uh, the location was my grandparents. My dad purchased it. Now I'm purchasing it for my dad. Um, we currently have one part-time employee. We'd like to expand to three to five employees over the next three to five years. Um, the building is about 42 by uh, roughly 80 feet. We just have some preliminary drawings. That would be on the big side. We're just kind of seeing what the lot would fit and whatnot. Um, a driveway would come off Brickyard Road, not Highway 29, so we wouldn't have to deal with Highway 29 traffic. It would be onto that Brickyard Road side street. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's about it. If anybody has any questions for me? I think if we had any questions, we'd come back and, okay. and you're gonna be here during the, um, the the business portion of it. So if we have any questions, we'll come back and ask you at that time. Thank you. Good, thank you. Anybody else like to speak in the public hearing portion of our meeting? Microphone is available. Last call for somebody to speak in public hearings. Okay, we're going to close the public hearing portion and move on under public comments. Public comments is a portion of our meeting where anybody can speak for three minutes or less under agenda items for the evening. Please, uh, if you'd like to speak, come up to the podium, uh, turn on the microphone, give us your name and address and do sign in. So at this time, we'll open up the public comments portion of our meeting. So come on forward. And we don't bite, just come on up and talk about anything you'd like in the agenda portion under the agenda for the evening. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> I'm Dallin Stickney. Oh, okay, Dallin. And I am Ian Edwards. We're here for uh, an agenda slot on the new business um, part of the agenda here. We're told to just get up and introduce ourselves during the public comment section. Perfect. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you, Ian. We'll get back to you shortly. All right. Good evening. My name is Matt Regner. I'm representing uh, WISDOT. Wisconsin Department of Transportation. I work for Cal Engineering and I'm here to discuss the Broadway and Pine Avenue intersection improvements. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Matt. Good evening, Susan Badke with the Regional Planning Commission. I will uh, be presenting under item H of new business on the uh, city's housing needs assessment. Great, thank you, Susan. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak in public comments? Now's your opportunity. Last call for anybody to speak in public comments. Okay, we'll close public comments, move on with the rest of our meeting. Under unfinished business, 5A would be the proposed zoning ordinance amendment at 1416 Brickyard Road for Corey Bush uh, from Agricultural A to District Rest Restricted Industrial I-1. Um, I think if anybody has any questions, I know Mr. Schofield has it up on the screen. Uh, maybe you can just tell a whereabouts of where this is, Mr. Schofield. 
Yeah, so this is at the corner of Brickyard Road and uh, Highway 29 uh, across the street and, well, down the street and across is uh, Dean and Sue's is about a quarter mile to the southwest uh, out Midway Road. And then the lots that we are in the process of selling to Habitat Humanity are to the east on Brickyard Road. So the dog park is just off the southeast corner of that photo there. Good, thank you. Um, Lee Schwebs, could you elaborate a little bit on the um, dialogue at the um, at the prior meeting or when when you guys the plan commission meeting and fill us in a little bit? Well, this was introduced. Uh, what uh, he asked for first was uh, pre on restrictive, and that was the concern that the so this I one is much more restrictive, and the vote was well. Chad was part of the committee too, but uh, um, it went five two. I think the one of the opposites, one of the people opposed was they were concerned about what it might turn into. You know, going from this business to something else that would not be desirable, and I. At least my feeling was that that could happen with any business, and uh, that was not a judgment point on on this. Uh, and I don't remember. I think the other one was just that uh, it might be kind of a spot zoning. And uh, just to the when you turn to go down to Dean Sue's, you go past the disposal company, and that does have the zoning. So it's there's a little space in between, but it's not unique to that area. Chad said, oh, you remembered it? Oh. Good, thank you, Lee. Um, Mr. Schofield, could you just touch a little bit on the I-3 zoning and what that includes, perhaps? Do you have that in front of you? As, yeah, sorry, I-1, I'm, I'm sorry, I-1, I-1 so. excuse me, I-1. So our, our I-1 is our most restrictive industrial zoning district. Um, it does allow for quite a few things. I included in your packet the uh, allowable uses within the I I-1 zone. Um, it allows machine shops, sheet metal manufacturer, assembly of home and office uh, furnishes and supplies, uh, bottling of non-alcoholic beverages, uh, manufacture of electrical appliances and devices. Uh, to be honest, a lot of those things would be hard to do in the size of a lot that he's um, proposing here, but theoretically they could be. Um, and you could theoretically have an annexation next door to an I-1 zone that would be easier to do that annexation at that time. So there, you know, there's some, you know, the slippery slope is always an issue with with zonings of this type. Okay, thank you. All right, council, I'm going to open it up. Uh, for, do we have to waive the rules? Uh, if we bring somebody from the audience up, yes. Question for Corey. Yes, we could make a motion to waive the rules. Motion to waive the rules. Thank you. Is there a second to that motion, Ryland? Go ahead, please. Yep, I will second uh, Gretchen's motion. Okay, motion made and seconded to waive the rules. All in favor of said motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? I think, uh, Corey, if you want to come back up to the microphone, uh, Gretchen's got a question for you. Yes, ma'am. I, I was just curious about, you, you mentioned about three to five employees, which would be great for our community. Um, do you, Is there enough parking that would be available once the building is in place for employees plus customers that might come out? Yeah, I think, uh, well, Cedar Corp did a preliminary drawing, and I don't know if it, it has the uh, parking lot on there, but... I don't know if it actually calls out parking spots, but that was taken into consideration when the okay. building was designed. And would would there be customer flow, or is it more a place where you would do the you know the process? So, yeah, so this would be more of where we just do the screen printing and embroidery. We would have customers stop by, but most of the stuff is digital nowadays, so okay. um, shipping and whatnot. And then we do most of the delivering for customers, so it would be minimal. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else for guests? Go ahead, Riley. Um, I assume that you're not going to be running this uh, 24 hours a day. It's going to be yeah, normal business hours Monday through Friday, close holidays and weekends. And um, oh, that doesn't sound like it's a loud business. You know, that's going to be, you know, you're not... no, it's it's quiet, <laughs> real quiet at least. With an insulated building, I mean, we don't really have any equipment. It's, you know, if you're inside, the sewing machines make a little bit of noise, but you're probably familiar with the sewing machine. And we have six of them running at one time, so a little bit more than a, res, a household. Because I, I assume that with you running it out of your 
off your personal property right now. Neighbors have yeah, complained. no neighbor complaints. Yeah, mm -hmm. actually, they're some business. They actually uh, do work with us for some stuff. Okay. So, yeah. So you're already you're not upsetting anybody with your business running how no, it is already. No, you're just looking no. to expand a little bit. Yeah, right, thanks. Hi, right, anybody else have any questions for Corey while we're there? Yes, Eric, go ahead, please. Okay, then uh, if any other, just thank you, Corey. I think you can probably welcome, thank you. take a chair. Um, and if anybody wants to either make a motion to support this or not, or otherwise, so go ahead, Eric. No, I just have a comment, Mayor. Um, you know, when this was um, presented, it was maybe about six weeks ago or so, and, you know, I, I had the concern of what this could be in the future, and, you know, you want to protect the, you know, the integrity of the neighborhood in the area, primarily because it's residential. And I do compare this in a sense to, you know, the coffee shop, um, re, or that was actually, I think it was a rezoning, par, partial rezoning of that would allow the coffee shop near Culver's and, and and we did vote that. I think we voted against that and I know we did. And um, this one doesn't concern me as much, but it, I still am concerned about the future. Corey sure seems like a great guy and I really don't have a concern with the current, the current business that he'd be putting in there. But I do have some concerns about the future and I thought that came up in the planning commission and I think it's come up in this council. Um, you know, I'm still split on whether I'm going to approve this or not, but I'm leaning that I won't just for that reason. That's all I have, Randy. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion pieces on this? Uh, go ahead, Chad. Do we have an example of where we um, we zoned it that we thought it could be an embroidery, and then they put in a oil refinery? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You get by what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do. Well, and then changing it, changing it from a um, you know, to an I one that's about as most restrictive as we can get, I think. So there's it's a pretty limited amount. And I mean, they couldn't do a scrapyard there or you know, change tires or an automotive center or things of that nature. So it is really quite restrictive. Um, I guess my only thought is is there enough room there to Put it and are we spot zoning or are we not spot zoning that'd be my only real question on this but as far as the business itself i you know i don't think that's uh it's a quiet business it's it's like like Corey said a lot of it's done digitally now um i guess the only concern would be if if someday it became something else or if if we're really going down the slippery slope of spot zoning you know that's just a that, that's the only weight in the room i believe well that was kind of my question is do we have an example of that? Uh, I don't know, Chief. Yeah, I, I've worked here for 11 years and I, I don't recall where we had a rezone like that and then some unusual business came into that spot. I mean, it doesn't mean it can happen. I'm just not recalling in that time that anything like that has happened. Ben might be able to recall something differently. No, he's been um, here nearly as long. Same way. Uh, been here, I think, since 2017. I have not seen that happen. Doesn't mean um, after Corey's business, many years from now, if that shuts down, a new business comes in. Um, but based on the zoning and then something else completely different comes in, we haven't seen that, no. Okay, uh, floor is the councils. If anybody would like to have more questions or more dialogue, uh, the floor is yours. Um, we can either make a motion or we don't have to make a motion this evening either. If we wanted to bring this up at a future meeting and, and put more questions to the task, we could certainly do that also. And Chad's got his microphone on. Chad. I'd like to make a motion if I could. I would like to make a motion approving the rezoning from AG to I-1. So, okay. Chad, on this, it was introduced first, so we would have to go through. If you, you could first start with waiving the first reading. Okay, so I'll have to take you back. So I'm sorry, it, it would be an ordinance change. So I'm going to just uh, let you, um, if you're interested in uh, introducing this, sorry to uh, it, it's introduced because we had to move it on to, okay, it's introduced and went to plan commission. So it'd be a, way, a motion to waive the first reading if you're interested in that. I'd like to make a motion to waive the first reading. Okay, motion made to waive the first reading, Rylan. I'll second Chad's motion. Okay, motion made and seconded to waive the first reading. Um, all in favor of said motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And then we'll need a motion to waive the second reading as well. Ryland? I'll make a motion to waive the second reading. Okay. Does anybody want to second that motion? Penny, go ahead, please. I'll second Ryland's motion. Okay. Motion been made and seconded to waive the second reading. Uh, all in favor of said motion, signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. And then we need a um, motion to adopt the said ordinance, and, and that would be Chad. Go ahead, please. I'd like to make a motion to adopt. Okay. That's a good motion. Okay. And is there a second? Randy, go ahead, please. A second Chad's motion. Okay. Motion been made and second to adopt the ordinance to change um, the zoning from agricultural A to I-1 um, district. Any discussion, uh, additional discussion on this? I think in this one we probably should. Let's do a roll call vote on this, Kate, please. Luther? Yes. Burstad? Yes. Sutherland? No. Yanko? No. McCullough? Yes. Schwebs? Yes. Gens? Yes. Schlu? Yes. Erdman? Yes. Sommerfeld? Yes. Okay, that passes. Congratulations, Corey. All right, moving on to... Um, under new business, 6A, review of Cedar Corporation lease at 800 Wilson Avenue. This came up kind of fast. Um, Cedar Corp had a, uh, a situation with their building and uh, I kind of made an executive decision and offered them space. Uh, they decided after they had gotten here, it's really a nice space and maybe we should talk about a lease. So in front of you um, is that scenario. And um, Chief, do you wanna talk about that? So given the circumstances with Cedar Corp and having to be displaced from their building, we saw an opportunity to offer some space here within City Hall to try to work as a, a temporary workspace for them. And so they agreed to do that, and we generated a quick lease agreement for them to work. Essentially, it's a month-by-month -month lease, and we gave them the rate that we would normally use for uh, our garden floor. So they received it's essentially the $85 a square foot. We move quickly on that on, on the lease. Normally, we'd bring that forward with you and, and do that before anybody moved in. But given the safety circumstances Cedar had and then our longstanding partnership with them, we felt comfortable that we needed to try to make an effort for them. So we're asking that you support the signing of the lease and, and uh, moving forward. Well, and, and I like the fact that, um, you know, they're in the garden level. That's the basement, <laughs> just to, so you know. Uh, but anyways. The, the best uh, level, best level, Mary. The best, there you go. It's level. Uh, well, I think it's a good idea. And, um, you know, it really, it really kind of completes our building here too with, with what we've got. So if somebody would like to support this, uh, we could entertain a motion at this time. Penny, go ahead, please. I'll make a motion to um, approve the lease for Cedar Corp in the garden level of the building. <laughs> Thank you. Is there a second? Go ahead, Gretchen. I'll second that motion. Okay, motion been made and seconded. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor of said vote, motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Okay, moving on to the review of the Sewer Utility 2022 Compliance Maintenance Annual Report. Uh, Mr. Schofield, I'm going to hand that off to you to start, and Paul's here too. So, Yeah, Paul's kind enough to join us here today. So this is a required step. Every year we have to uh, complete the CMAR and uh, submit it to the DNR. And one of the steps is the council has to be given an opportunity to take a look at it and say nice things to Paul Sturk. So he's here. Great. Paul, turn your microphone on and have at her. Okay, that pretty much sums it up. It's the annual report of how we did. Um, they look at our um, maintenance, uh, plant performance, testing results. Uh, financial management and so forth. And we have uh, a straight A report again. Um, no major issues last year, no sewer backups, which is good. Um, so I can answer any questions if anybody has any. Well, now that you said that, I, I got a whole list of questions for you. Well, first off, you got an A on your report. That's, that's really good news. Uh, have we always gotten an A on our report? Uh, as long as I've been here, we have, yeah. Oh, well, there you go. That's I mean, yeah, I think we always have. I, <laughs> All right. And then uh, I guess also. <laughs> right. a couple of other questions that maybe the council doesn't always get a chance to be pervy to, but like uh, the BODs and uh, the extra wastewater from like Ellsworth Creamery. Um, you know, I know you guys have, are completing a project down there. Maybe you could just touch on the project and a little bit about uh, the, the, the extra intake of the water that we were getting so far and just tell us how it's going. Um, yeah, the project's just about complete. Um, the UV system has been up and running since May 1st. We had a few hiccups with that, getting it tuned. Um, some parts weren't in for the automatic gate, which uh, um, 
Uh, we did have some E. coli exceedances in, in May. We did not meet our limit. This happened uh, last year as well when we had a portable UV system in. Um, We've got it. Uh, we got it figured out now. The vendors have been working on it to get that gate working and get everything, you know, communicating, and it seems to be working fine now. The filters are the sand is in the filters. They're just about ready to start them up. They're doing the wash cycle now. They have to wash the filters and get everything cleaned out. Um, a Friday, I went up to Bloomer with my foreman to look at their filters. We had a few questions and concerns and. Uh, they've had their filters up and running for a couple of years now. It's the exact same thing we're getting. It's only a smaller size up at Bloomer. Um, yeah, the, the creamery's been in town. They've been uh, they've been good. They've had a, a few issues, small ones, but their impact on us is is very minimal. Their wastewater is. I mean, they could have their own discharge permit. Basically, uh, it's it's very low. It's it's not like uh, raw wastewater coming into us. Their phosphorus is a little higher than they. And raw than 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 uh, uh, discharged effluent, but it's it's very low as well. So they've been a they've been a good customer to work with too. Great, so. great. No, I think that uh, you know the you guys have been doing a great job, and the projects uh, you know just about complete. Did I see Blacktop going on the road the other day out in front Blacktop of you? Blacktop is finished, and the road's been been completed. Good, good, yeah. good. Any questions for Paul Stark while we've got him up there? Good. We'll keep up the good work, and uh, we'll see if we can get this approved for you. Okay, Council, that brings it back to you. If you'd like to support the Sewer Utility 2022 Compliance Maintenance Annual Report, uh, we need a uh, resolution adoption. So vote affirmative for um, to support the resolution. Somebody, anybody, Lee? I'll make that motion. All right, there it is. So we have a motion on the floor. I'll second Lee's Laura. motion. Great. So a motion been made and seconded to support the uh, compliance maintenance annual report resolution. Uh, all in favor of said motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Okay, moving down to 6C, review of the well site investigation paper study agreement. Um, we've had uh, four sites, I believe, that we were looking at for a possible future well, and I'll turn it over to Mr. Schofield. David? Yeah, so we've talked on a couple of occasions, and we'll talk a little bit more under the communication section that we need another municipal well. And in order to make sure that we're putting it in the right location and we're not hamstringing ourselves in the future, we're gonna go through a process here where we do a well site investigation paper study. Cedar Corp is gonna come up with four uh, possible sites. We're gonna narrow that down to two and they're gonna do some detailed cost estimates and conceptual layouts on those two sites. So they've given us a proposal of $24,500 for this work and I'm recommending approval of that contract. Okay, thank you, Mr. Schofield. So if anybody would like to support this, uh, we can move this forward for the future future project of a possible new, new well. Laura? I'll move to approve the Cedar Corp proposal for 24,500. Okay, motion's on the floor. Is there a second to that motion? Chad? I'll second her motion. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Discussion? Roll call vote, please. Burstead? Yes. Sutherland? Yes. Yanko? Yes. McCullough? Yes. Schwebs? Yes. Gentz? Yes. Schlue? Yes. Erdman? Yes. Sommerfeld? Yes. Luther? Yes. Okay, thank you. 6D would be the review of the Community Service Department request to sell surplus equipment. Um, Dave is here this evening if we have any questions from for him. Um, otherwise, it uh, looks like a pretty nice, uh, pretty, boy, I really like that lawn mowing. <laughs> Mr. Schofield, Mr. Schofield said that's one of the best lawnmowers we've got on the fleet. So said we should probably take a look at that. But anyways, um, these are items that uh, basically um, are obsolete for the city and we sell them off to other communities or other individuals, services or organizations. Um, she looks like a dandy. A grasshopper too. So, yeah, these will be sold via a Lee auction or Wisconsin surplus. If you approve the disposal tonight. Okay. Anybody want to entertain a motion to approve the sale of these items? Mayor Penny? 
I will make a motion to approve community service department selling the requested surplus items. Thank you. Good motion. Is there a second to that motion? Jeff, go ahead. I'll second your motion. Motion been made and seconded. Any additional discussion? Oh, Chad. They take the stickers off of them before they sell them? Uh, good question. I would think they probably do we. Do we take the stickers off, the insignias off the trucks before we sell them? Or paint over them? Oh, oh. Okay, great. Laura. Is there an advantage to doing lease surplus versus the Wisconsin, uh, the state surplus? I'll turn your mic on, please. Was there an advantage to, I didn't hear that. Is or, there an advantage to using our local lease surplus versus the Wisconsin state? Wisconsin surplus, if we sell some for $3,000, we get 3,000. Otherwise we pay a selling fee and a buyer's fee to Lee. So we get uh, total money for Wisconsin surplus. And it's going statewide, it's pretty. So like the chainsaw, we'll more than likely run down to a Lee auction. We we take our sweeper brooms down there now. We pay fi like $500 for a sweeper broom and we're getting, I think our last one was 260 on a used one, a wore out broom. So, and our paint barrels, when we're done painting, we wash them out and take them down there, people buy them. So those two things are always going on there. I was told by the past past two guys, just take them down there, don't bring them in front of you guys. But that's that's all I guess. It, it works out to be a good deal for us. We just make a lot more money that way. <laughs> Great. Yeah, we used to throw the brooms right in the dumpster <laughs> in the garbage van all the way. And now we're getting 200 <laughs> some dollars for them. Good question. Good answer. Thank you, David. Okay. So um we have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any other discussion? All in favor of said motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. That brings us down to 6E, review of the Menominee Police Department's proposed purchase of squad cars. Um, Rick Hollister is here this evening, the uh, current chief of police. And uh, if you would like to step up the podium, Rick, and tell us how many squads are we looking at getting and when will we get them and all the good stuff. Looking at getting two squads this year. And uh, usually how it works is we we start with uh, Northtown Ford and we get our, our squads specced out and built so we know what we're looking at. And then we uh, submit bids out to the area dealerships. This year we started that process and uh, we started like on February 7th. And then the 21st, we were notified that uh, the Ford lines had shut down this year already. So they, ever since COVID, they, they're, they're shutting down quicker, it sounds like, and uh, there's no control over that. So we were left uh, to be waiting for 2024s with the price going up, and it goes up anywhere from 5 to 7 8%. Just, you don't know what that's going to be. In, in, in the terms of $42,000 per car, it gets to be quite a bit. And uh, Northtown Ford did notify us that they had a couple cars that, matched the specs that we want for our equipment and our officers and they were uh, held back from the Dunn County Sheriff's Department and what happened is the Sheriff's Department wanted trucks first and then this was their second option that it was placed well before this so we're uh, able to get these and, and save some money. Hmm. That's interesting um, and then you retrofit them with the other equipment from the other qu squads and so forth this yes. is just for the cars themselves. Yes. Okay, sounds good. Any questions for Chief Hollister as long as we have him up there? Great, thank you, Chief. Hey, how's it going out there in the Chief's in the Chief's chair? We're, we're going, we're going. Transition's going smooth, and uh, I was left with good hands, so we're, we're in a good place. Good, good. It sounds like you're doing a great job out there. Thank you. Okay, so that brings us back to the council, uh, Chief. Do you have anything to add to the squads? I do real quick. There was conversation last year about looking for hybrid squads. Some communities have brought those on board and the police department explored getting the hybrids, but they had already closed out the process to be able to get those as you heard. So they were left out and were lucky enough though to be contacted with these two. However, though in light of knowing now that they're closing down that bidding process really as we move towards the end of the year, we'll start exploring and then look to see what that pricing is for the hybrids, because those communities that did get the hybrid cars, the cost isn't that much more and they have been able to save a considerable amount on fuel. So I, 
if that comes forward as something that's uh, of interest to council, I, I would encourage us to take a real good look at that. I think it's something we could save on fuel costs, have a little less of a carbon footprint, so to speak, be better for the environment overall. But anyway, I just wanted to address that since that got brought up by a couple council. Oh, and Chief is back up here. I did uh, speak to Northtown Ford uh, about the hybrids, and it's just under three thousand dollars per car more. So you figure out what the fuel cost, and that would be that's what you're looking at. Could be a next year's discussion piece. Definitely, definitely. Great, cool. Thanks, Chief. Okay, all right. Uh, so that brings it back to the council. If anybody would like to support the new squads, now is your opportunity to make a motion. Benny, I will make a motion to. Um, Purchase two new squad cars from Northtown Ford in the total amount of $84,660. Okay, Ben. Good motion. Thank you. Is there a second to that motion, Eric? I'll second that, Randy. Okay, motion been made and seconded. Any additional discussion? Roll call vote, please. Sutherland? Yes. Yanko? Yes. McCullough? Yes. Schwebs? Yes. Gentz? Yes. Schlu? Yes. Erdman? Yes. Sommerfeld? Yes. Luther? Yes. First dad. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Brings us down to 6F, the presentation from WISDOT regarding Broadway Street and Pine Avenue improvements. Um, we have Matt Resner here. And David, if you want to introduce, we'll go from there. Yeah, so the Wisconsin DOT is looking to do an improvement project at the intersection of Pine and Broadway, which is also uh, on their parlance, State Highway 25 and U.S. Highway 12. Uh, that project includes a couple of improvements that they'll go through in a short presentation that they have here. They had a, a public informational meeting here back in, I believe, February. Um, and I, I thought there were some things in that public informational meeting that the council should be aware of and maybe bring a little more light to the project so that when construction starts, we're not all surprised by what's happening out there. So. Great. And in, and in order to follow Hoyle, we need a motion to waive the rules. Go ahead, Ryland. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to waive the rules so that Matt may speak. Okay, is there a second to that motion? Lee, go ahead, please. Second the motion. Motion been made and second to waive the rules. All in favor, set motion. Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, thank you. Oh, welcome, and uh, turn your microphone on and tell us the details. Hello again, uh, Matt Regner with KL. Um, KL Engineering uh, is a consulting engineering firm uh, contracted by WISDOT, who is representative here today as well, um, as well as a uh, consulting engineering firm, Ayers, who is helping them with WISDOT project management of this project. So this specific WISDOT project is located on the map that Dave has pulled up. It's south of uh, 94, right at the intersection of 12, uh, 25 in Pine, Broadway in Pine. Um, the intersection with the McDonald's and the Walgreens. So, um, next slide. David's gonna scroll through these for me. So again, that's project, the team here. Um, I'm there at the bottom. Um, Jim Koenig with Wista listed at top. Foveril couldn't be here with us today, but his coworker, Brett Hollister is here. Um, but that's the project team. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out. If you could slide down there, Dave, appreciate it. Covered this already. Um, so this project, um, this intersection improvement project was initially part of a, a larger WISDOT project uh, occurring at the interchange of 25 and to the north, um, which is also in the design phase. Um, while in the early stages of that project, this intersection stood out as having um, significant enough safety issues that WISDOT could pursue federal money uh, as a standalone project for these improvements. And to that end, they pursued uh, highway safety improvement program funding, HISAP funding, um, based on the uh, safety issues prevalent at the intersection, which were a high number of crashes on the US-12, uh, basically approach to the intersection from the west uh, at the McDonald's and strip mall uh, driveway as well as quite a few uh, issues with sight lines at the intersection itself, uh, largely due to the offset of the left turn lanes. Um, I'll get into more details on all of that on the next slides. So starting with those offset left turn lanes, I guess what I'm talking about is if you can imagine pulling up to an intersection, you're in the left turn lane and the, the opposing left turn lane is directly across from you. That's no offset. And for the most part, you can kind of peer around you know, that car. 
Um, what we're dealing with at this intersection is negative offset lanes, which is shown on the graphic on the left there. And that's where no matter how hard you, you know, stretch your neck, you're not going to see through that car. And that really creates dangerous sight lines, um, dangerous to the drivers themselves as they have to accept smaller gaps uh, in traffic because they just can't see. And that uh, also correlates to pedestrians trying to navigate the intersection as drivers are much more distracted by the other vehicles on the road. Well, we all want that positive offset on the left. Um, you can see that depicted there. Um, if you could keep going, David. So here's just a quick uh, kind of pictorial of that existing intersection, which just shows what we all know as we drive it. Um, if you're sitting, if you're the red car approaching from the west and you're looking east, um, you really can't see much on the approach there if there's a car in the left turn lane. And really that's true on all the approaches. So that was identified early and that's part of what helped this uh, individual intersection improvement project get its safety funding. If you could keep going, David. So um, the proposed improvements um, shown on the screen here as the improvements, improvements as of March, 2023, uh, but they're going to address those left turn offsets at the intersection, as well as put in that uh, raised median to the west uh, at those driveway accesses. Um, and these improvements were all done to specifically address uh, the safety needs identified in the study. Um, I'm gonna get into a bit more as we keep going, David. So um, two other improvements are, as you head southbound on uh, 25 and you're looking to turn uh, westbound on 12, uh, that's a difficult movement for large trucks. So there's going to be a little bit of widening there, um, which will translate to some uh, right away uh, acquisition with the Walgreens parcel there, just to provide them with a larger radius with which to navigate without going into other lanes of traffic. The other huge thing that's going to be done here um, is that right turn pork chop. Um, it's currently uh, designed in a way that as you weight at the yield line there, you're really having to crank your neck to see. And so what we're trying to achieve here with the design is more of a 90 degree approach to you, the driver. So you can just casually turn over your left shoulder and check for uh, gaps in traffic as you hope to turn right on to 25. So here I kind of redid the uh, sight lines from existing to what they'd be proposed. Um, and honestly, I drew these from the center of the car shape, if you will. The drivers are on the left side, but still you can see you have really good sight lines, especially for the speeds we have at this intersection. Um, basically, we were able to uh, achieve just slightly positive offset on the east and west approaches, uh, 12 and Pine, and then fully positive offset approaches on, on 25 itself. This also translates well to that uh, turn lane uh, improvement geometrically. And this is the addition of single signal heads, traffic signal heads over each lane. And that helps drivers know exactly what they're supposed to do. And it's very clear as to what's out there now, which is like two signals per approach and then an additional one on the near side. Um, I have it on the screen here, but a large part of this project is improving those existing pedestrian curb ramps to the highest ADA uh, Americans with Disabilities Act uh, standards that we can. Um, I believe we're, we are achieving ADA compliance there. And also we're up upgrading as many to be uh, type uh, two crossings as we can, which is um, favorable to what's out there now, which is just a single ramp kind of sending the walker into the intersection. If you could keep going, David. So a bit more on a uh, zoomed in image on that uh, concrete median, uh, the red box depicts uh, the limits of the median. Um, basically, in short, this median will uh, restrict access of any left turners in or out of these two driveways, uh, fundamentally just to reduce those crashes uh, that have occurred at this, at this driveway intersection, essentially. Um, and there's a depiction of those crashes later in the and Matt, as well. Could you uh, tell us which driveway this southern one is and which driveway the northern one is? Uh, that driveway right there where David has the mouse is the driveway to the McDonald's as well as to the strip mall. And to the north, that would predominantly be, I believe there's an alley to the left, but it's predominantly the Walgreens parcel. Okay, so that, that road um, 
heading to the west then would be towards uh, Fleet Farm. Yep, I'm or fine. like Heller, Heller Roads just around the bend. Right, thank you. You're welcome. Lastly, um, improvements uh, being accomplished at this intersection include a mill and overlay of the asphalt on the Pine Avenue East intersection. Uh, this is just within about, I believe, 100 feet or so of the intersection itself. It doesn't go all the way to, I believe, Stout Road. Um, also, signs are going to be updated as needed, um, as well as placing all new pavement marking as needed. Um, as I said earlier, and I'll say again a little later more specifically, but there will be some right away required for this project. So for construction, um, we are looking at construction in 2025. It's going to be staged construction, which means we'll kind of build all those improvements I had on my screen in pieces to allow traffic uh, to operate out here fully. Um, we'll have single lane closures. Um, a detour is being considered for US-12. Uh, reasons for that would just be to get a better finished product built more homogeneously as well as just greatly reduce construction time um, it's just a consideration right now uh, there'll be a temp signal erected that'll be like the traffic signal but on overhead wires uh, while the intersection improvements are being accomplished so um, real estate uh, has been largely identified um, and is in the draft stage um, we're expecting that to be approved in fall, and at that point, any parcel impacted by this project will be directly reached out to by WISDOT, who will uh, coordinate with them further through the acquisition process. Um, we will need uh, real estate for both, like a permanent acquisition in the case of that uh, southbound to uh, westbound movement on that, on that uh, quadrant, as well as just some extra uh, real estate for construction activities. So the schedule, um, as I said, we're, we're already down to real estate acquisition in fall 2023. The final design plans are going to be completed by August of next year, 2024, with construction 2025, which I heard cannot come soon enough uh, from Dave, based on the state of some of these median islands. So this is the latest and greatest of the design files, um, and it zooms out a bit to show um, maybe Heller Road and where exactly we are in the grand scheme of things. Um, you can see a bit closer here how curb ramps are being realigned a little bit more sensibly for, for uh, pedestrians in the case of uh, where we can. Um, but overall, what you should notice is that all the improvements short of in that uh, northwest quadrant are happening within the existing confines of the intersection. Um, so no real widening going on. Um, and then I believe I'm just finishing with, uh, it's hard to visualize crashes and these kind of don't help, but you can kind of see from all these zigzags and squiggles, these are crashes that have occurred. Um, some of them serious, but all of them with the potential to be serious. Um, and at the intersection here, which is the first, pick, uh, first uh, PDF page, um, and this is something we heard pretty resoundingly in all of our PIM comments from this past March, Drivers don't feel safe trying to navigate this intersection. They can never see. Drivers are super aggressive, which I kind of get because you have to be because you can't see. Um, so I think that fundamentally, as we improve the experience for drivers, it's going to have uh, impact on this, the way pedestrians feel, who are going to feel like they're more seen because drivers aren't spending every last second of their vision identifying vehicles. They can look for people in the crosswalks. Um, the next slide here, David, this is all of the crashes that occurred at that um, driveway access. And I know, again, it's hard to see, but you can see a lot of them are basically arrows pointing to left movements, crossing movements, all the movements that are occurring by that full access that it's currently um, being provided. Um, and ultimately, this was fundamentally a part of why the, the highway safety uh, improvement program funded this project with federal dollars um, with the goal of reducing um, these crashes, which have the potential to be dangerous for um, citizens. So I know I flew through that uh, and keep in respect to everyone's time, but I'm available for questions. Oh, any quick question, go ahead, please. Well, I was gonna say, yeah, thanks, uh, because yeah, I've struggled with that one myself. Um, I haven't tried to walk across there. What kind of pedestrian signaling is happening? Is there anything new happening with pedestrian signaling or is it going to 
look the same as it does now? I don't know if it will look the same. I bet visibility will be better for pedestrians, the pedestrians themselves, um, as they identify like their walk, don't walk signs. But it is a signalized crossing, which means if a pedestrian walks up there now, they do get to hit a button. Okay. I couldn't remember. Thanks. One thing we did ask that they add is the countdown timers. And that that uh, thank you, David. Most of the project is is funded by DOT or HISSIP, but the countdown timer upgrade is is a, is our cost. But that's a very small cost as in comparison to the overall project. Laura, good. So I um, I bike through that intersection, and one of the things that is really difficult is if I'm at the McDonald's corner trying to get um, from the sidewalk onto that little. Perk job, you called it. Um, um, it's, as you mentioned, the drivers that are coming to take that right turn are already looking that way. And so they are not looking for pedestrians coming coming this way. It's it, it, I don't feel very safe crossing from the sidewalk to that little median. Um, do you think that having it be a more closer to a 90 degrees will help that? I, I think it will, and, and David went ahead and pulled it up on the screen now. You can just kind of see for the most of your crossing from uh, the McDonald side to that uh, yeah. pork shop island, you're kind of straight in line to a driver's visibility, which is a large change from existing. Yeah, so okay. Hopefully drivers just feel like they can rush a little less out there and they just pay more attention, but that might be hopeful thinking. So <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yes, we can hope. Yep. Any other questions? So you mentioned funding uh, uh, the portion. Um, how, what what do you think the 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 funding? I mean, federal funding and is there state funding also? And how much of this project do you think the city would have to be? Uh... Uh, I would say very very little, and I would welcome a correction. But the HISAP funding is ninety ten. Okay. So that's going to be ninety percent federal, ten percent state. There's, there's some small things, uh, especially as we relate to the traffic signal itself, which uh, there's something called connecting highway limits, where essentially even though WSDOT's paying for the traffic signal improvements, it is going to be owned and operated by the city. So there's some things like that might cost money beyond that, but very small percentage. Good, good. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? And um, appreciate you being here this evening. And and giving us the uh, update regarding the uh, the project itself. Um, I, think, I don't think there's any any action to be taken on this this evening. So I appreciate you being here this evening. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. And moving on to the next piece of business. Under 6G presentation by from Dylan Stickney. Uh, Dylan and, er and Ian are here this evening uh, regarding the um, Elk Creek Solar Project. And they're going to kind of give us, uh, you know, what's going on out there and how it's coming and and uh, what the future looks like. So, oh, we will. Yeah, we'll have to suspend the rules too, um, Chief. Just... So we we invited them to come here and speak today on behalf of a request. The former older person Kelly McCullough thought that this would be of interest for this group here to try to learn a little bit about Elk Creek Solar and what they are going to be doing here in Dunn County and potentially Menominee. And uh, so. We were able to get them on the agenda today. We're very happy that they're here to have a conversation. And uh, in order for them to speak, we would need uh, to suspend the rules. So yeah, somebody would like to make a motion to waive the rules. Ryland, go ahead. Yeah, I would like to make a motion to waive the rules. Okay, great, thank I'll you. I'll second that motion. Okay, motion been made and seconded to waive the rules. All in favor of said motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Well, good evening, gentlemen. Tell us what you got going on. Good evening. Let me just come right out and say, we're not here to ask for anything. Just wanna make sure that that's clear. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Just want to share some updates on the Elk Creek Solar Project. Uh, Ian, myself, Anna Mavis, our local representative here. Um, you know, one of the things that we think is extremely important, making sure local community leaders have the information available to them when questions are posed to you folks about what's happening in your community, albeit this may not be right here in the city of Menominee. So Elk Creek Solar Project, we've been fortunate to work on this project for a number of years now. Um, just went to kind of the public part of the development process for a project like this, this last fall. Uh, formally submitted our application to the Public Service Commission of Wisconsin, which oversees and regulates and approves or makes large decisions on any power project of this size. Since October, uh, we're pleased to say that uh, we signed joint agreements with both the town of Springbrook 
and Dunn County uh, regarding communication and best practices leading into, during, and after construction. Uh, also pleased to say that we've been you know, really excited and, and uh, pleased with how much we've gotten to engage with the community, meet different folks within the, you know, within the town, within the county, and outside of Dunn County as well, uh, established a, a sponsorship and charitable partnership program as well. Um, you know, one of the, maybe one of the biggest of that is, is a charitable pledge agreement to the Elk Mound Area School District that, you know, our project is 100% within that school district. So um, excited for that agreement, excited for that to, to really kick in once we start construction and, and get this project operating. But Elk Creek Solar as a whole, it's a 300 megawatt solar and battery storage project. And to put that in perspective, that's annually enough power to, to, to um, supply more than 60,000 average Wisconsin size homes. Um, this project, again, formally submitted last October. We're hoping to have that certificate from the Public Service Commission of Wisconsin, possibly by August of this year. That would mean that construction could start as early as next fall in 2024 and into operations as early as the end of 2025. Um, so we're really excited. Our company, Ted Renewables, based out of Kansas City, again, one of the, one of the uh, greatest projects in our portfolio. We've been uh, fortunate enough, again, Ian and myself, to come out to Dunn County, come out to Menominee, spend quite a bit of time. And uh, again, love to hear any questions that you folks have for us. Uh, a lot more information in front of you on our website, posting to our Facebook page regularly, and uh, our contact information always available uh, if you'd like. Great. Um, uh, a couple quick questions. Um, well, I think it's great. I think solar is the future, and uh, you know, eventually, probably uh, solar on top of our roof here before 2050. Um, how many acres does this uh, encompass? At the end, at the end of the day, all said and done, it'll be probably just shy of 2,000 acres. 2,000 acres. Yeah. Okay. And um, where is I? I know where this is, but the group doesn't know exactly where this is. Could you give a kind of a, a just a ballpark figure of where this is? Sorry. Um, yeah, do we not? I could pass this around if you'd like. So, the, well, uh, does anybody know where? Um, let's see. It's the it, Russell Doan Farms. Um, uh, yeah, so Chippewa Valley Bean. If you headed out east of town, past the county offices, and you take a right on County Road E, follow E for maybe three miles or so. Yeah. And then once you hit Eight Tenth, between Eight Tenth and um nine sorry between 8 10th and county road h pretty much everything south of e between 8 10th and h and then it runs down as far south as uh maybe just a half a mile south of county road c mm -hmm. so kind of in that falls prairie area there and 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 i understand you have a uh land lease with the farmer that owns the property we do yeah and been... how many year out how many years so the, the lease would run for a base term of 35 years 35 years okay great Okay, any other questions for these gentlemen? Oh, there is that the map there? Sorry, so Dave, if you just move or if you just move a little to the north and east, a little further. So right where the town hall is, we're right across the road. That's the western boundary of the project. So you're right next to Springbrook Town Hall then? Right across the street from the town hall. Oh, okay, very good. We had a nice uh, open house event there in December and had over 100 people. Uh, come in and, and learn more about the project. So if you zoomed out just a little bit, you can see E up to the north there that runs northwest to southeast. And it's not everything included there, right? It's it's again about 2,000 acres um, in this area, kind of in the in the southeast part of your screen that you're looking at. And then H is pretty much right on the edges. Yeah, there you go. How many solar panels total do you put in there? And are these are the 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 new upgraded modern solar panels? I take it that they are. These are the large size. Yeah, the utility scale panels, they'd be about 500 or maybe 550 watts per panel. You're talking several hundred thousand panels out in the fields there. Okay. And so when you come here to do the installation and the work, are you planning on hiring local individuals for some of the construction properties? Ideally, yeah, that's always the best case scenario. Um, it you know really comes down to what kind of labor crews are available at the time when we're ready to go into construction. We've got commitments to not just the utility, but, you know, other counterparties um, involved in the project, right? Buyers of the power, you know, where it's being delivered as to when we need to be online. So that is a constraint when we're thinking about labor. But, you know, our, our economic impact analysis, again, that's a public document that's filed with our application on the PSC website. 
anticipated to create, you know, north of 350 jobs during that construction phase. Okay, good. Any other questions for these gentlemen? Yes, Laura. I just want to say, I, I've been hearing a lot about this. My husband is County Board Chair Kelly McCullough, and I've been really impressed with how much you're involving the community and the commitment you are making. To, I mean, the school commitment itself is significant, and I understand that you don't have to do that. Um, so I just want to say thank you for for making such a commitment to being a, a productive member of this community in this county. So thanks. Yeah, thank you for saying that. We want to be a long-term neighbor, and we wanted to come out and introduce ourselves to the council because we hope you hear from us more times in the future. We want to be here around for a long time. Great. Okay, Lee? Can I ask you a personal question? Are you related to Don Stickney? Don Stickney? Yeah. I don't believe so, no. Okay. That's a swanery. He was a nor utility guy I worked with with NSP. Okay. Okay. I love it. Man. Great. <laughs> Done sticking in Dunn County. All right. Any other questions? Nice presentation. Thank you, gentlemen, very much for being here this evening. Best of luck to you. If you need anything from the mayor's office or the city of Menominee, please reach out to us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. And that moving on would be um, 6H uh, would be the presentation from Susan Badke regarding Dunn County Housing Study. Again, we'll need a motion to waive the rules. Rylan? Yep, I'd like to make a motion to waive the rules. Great, thank you. Is there a second to that motion? Gretchen? I'll second that. Okay, motion made and second to waive the rules. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, thank you. Hi, Susan, good evening. I understand we have a need for some affordable housing and you have a housing study and some goals and uh, <laughs> yes we, and I know we talked about how much material you have this evening yes. and yep. you're just going to give us a snippet of what you have exactly yes good evening thank you for uh, allowing me the opportunity to be here tonight my name is Susan Badkin with the West Central Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission at your place I did place a copy of the presentation that I prepared I'm going to move through this very quickly uh, to respect your time and the beautiful evening and the other matters that you have. So with that, uh, but that said, if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out to me at the Regional Planning Commission. You can get in contact with me or you can reach out and, and work through your administrator as well. A um, few acknowledgments. Uh, thank you to city staff, uh, the Housing Advisory Committee, and then also our funding sources. And next, please. Um, in terms of project background, this project really, the, the housing needs assessment really stemmed from a health perspective. Um, that's how it really, really started at the county level. This feeds into that uh, county level needs assessment. Variety of data sources um, went into the project. Uh, next, please, and next. Uh, census data is our primary source of quantitative data. We received permit data, conducted a number of interviews uh, with a variety of stakeholders. A countywide housing survey was completed. There was a city housing forum um, that hopefully some of you folks participated in, housing advisory committee, amongst other sources. Some key data findings uh, from the needs assessment. Number of households are increasing. Household sizes are getting smaller. We need more housing units for smaller households. Uh, in the city, uh, in terms of incomes, 56% of households in the city as of 2020 had a household income less than 50,000. Important to keep our incomes in mind when we're talking about housing, housing affordability. In terms of the city's housing mix, uh, the rental units are about 60% of your overall housing stock, 40%. Uh, very low vacancy rates on the rental and the owner. You have some subsidized income qualified units. Some of those are coming up uh, on their expiration for their project term as it relates to low income housing tax credits. So you'll want to monitor those. And I spoke with uh, city officials regarding that. Uh, significant increase in housing insecure households. So increased uh, shelter nights, inquiries, that's countywide. Um, data from Stepping Stone Shelter. Uh, quality of housing, this came up uh, and, and probably nothing surprising to you folks, um, is that the quality of housing specifically surrounding the university 
very poor condition. Um, uh, student rentals, but not just students either, other, other uh, housing units. City is lagging behind in new construction. If you look at your housing uh, construction numbers, um, which are detailed in the needs assessment that's in the hands of the city administrator right now for um, review, it goes into all of that data, but you're, you're, you're very uh, b behind in new construction. And the lack of housing, the quality of housing as a whole is really impacting the ability to attract workforce. And that really came up uh, through state stakeholder interviews as well as at the housing forum. On the screen, I'm not gonna go through this, but these are the top 10 occupations um, by job count in Dunn County and the uh, 2022 median hourly and annual wages. So when we talk about workforce, what can folks afford um, in the county? It's important we look at the occupations and the associated wages. Next slide, please. Um, in terms of key housing needs, these really stem from those key findings. You need more rental units at all price points. <laughs> um, you know, subsidized for those low or moderate income, uh, workforce, market rate, even some executive uh, rental units for folks that want to have their families live in a rental unit before they actually commit or perhaps they're building a home. Uh, more owner units, both smaller and uh, larger. Uh, units for your, your low and moderate income. Units for seniors, we have an aging population, so it's important to provide that senior housing, uh, allow folks to stay here in the community and age in place. Uh, housing for housing insecure population, again, those that are homeless, perhaps they're recently evicted, have some registry or conviction on them, and then that improved housing quality. The housing, um, in terms of housing demand, so we look at population and household projections, out uh, using the state's projections out to 2040 in the next 20 uh, you know 18 to 20 years you're going to need you know it's pro projected um you know that you have a uh, a need for an additional about uh, you know 500 to 600 housing units, and uh, the report, uh, the study breaks that down rental versus owner and provides some additional um, needs. So again, if you want more people to live here, want to grow your workforce, uh, attract and retain workers you're going to need additional housing units. In terms of uh, recommended housing goals, there are five recommended goals um, that were uh, discussed with the Housing Advisory Committee, really um, address the unmet housing demand, so build more housing. It's not all gonna come from necessarily new housing stock, um, but uh, you need to, need to meet that uh, uh, housing demand, provide a balanced housing market, quality housing choices, uh, provide sh uh, shelter for all, and then educate, collaborate, and advocate. The housing needs assessment identifies several potential strategies that can be utilized um, and, and used by the city, used by the county, used by, um, you know, really any community. Um, and it kind of breaks down uh, those strategies into seven kind of strategies buckets or strategy areas. I won't go through those tonight, but what I will go through and touch on is the recommended action plan that was discussed with the Housing Advisory Committee at your place. In addition to the presentation, there is a copy of the uh, recommended housing action plan that identifies those 18 um, recommended actions. One of the key actions, and it's actually number one um, on that table, which is figure 40, um, is to participate in the Dunn County Housing Work Group and consider forming a City of Menominee housing team. So the county, um, again, City of Menominee, you're a participant, you, you contribute to the county, and really collaboratively and collectively we need to work at attacking and addressing the, the housing issues um, that are countywide. And so the county is planning to form a, uh, a housing work group, and so being a participant in that uh, certainly would be um, a wise first step. Um, there are some other, uh, other, and this is all in draft form. I see a, a typo right there. Um, so I'm going to note that, but, um, uh, you know, so those are a few things. Also remove regulatory barriers in terms of reviewing your ordinances. These are all things, and we talked at the Housing Advisory Committee. Some of these things, it sounds like your city staff are already working on, um, you know, streamlining the process, creating a development guide to help developers navigate your development process. Um, so there are 18 uh, uh, recommended action items. Those things aren't going to to take place overnight. They're going to take time. You're gonna work at it in piecemeal and hopefully um, you know, make some progress. 
Also in um, printed out uh, following that uh, housing action plan is potential performance indicators. So it's going to be important that you, um, you know, review and evaluate over time what progress you are making. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Again, I know I breezed through that, but um, certainly once that report is out, uh, please take a look and feel free to reach out with any questions. Well, Susan, thank you. I know I pushed you a little hard to, to be fun. brief on your report this evening, but the, the information is in front of you this evening. She's got a real nice packet to take a look at, and you can either reach out to her. I think on the last page, her contact information is there. Uh, the city is taking some moves in the near future to help with some housing issues. Uh, we'll bring you up to speed on that uh, in the near future. Um, but I really want to thank you for coming this evening and uh, giving us the briefing and uh, appreciate your work on this. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Oh, did, did, did the council have any questions? I think we probably are good, right? I think we're, we're going to look at the pack and then we'll probably have lots of questions. Okay, thank you. Okay, moving on. Uh, appointments to the Airport Commission and Board of Review. Um, discussion and possible motions approving. The Airport Commission, uh, Stephen Lee, uh, has decided to fill a role on the Airport Commission. Um, he was one of the candidates for the city administrator. I think he'd be a great add-on to the Airport um, Commission. He also had some um, work that uh, entailed uh, airport um, uh, attorneying or whatever they would call it. Uh, so uh, back in Hong Kong, where he has a practicing attorney firm, um, he did quite a bit of work with one of the largest airports uh, in the area over there. So he does have some knowledge, but he's a, he's also a, uh, a resident of Menominee, and he was born and raised here and graduated here too. So I think he'll be a good addition. And then also the Board of Review, um, Mark Kelster, which uh, is again a Menominee resident, uh, has um, uh, committed himself to being on the Board of Review um, Mark, I've known Mark for a very long time. He's a great choice, very level-headed, uh, and very concerning for the city of Menominee. So I think these are great choices. Oops. Oh, yes. Mark is April 2021. Uh, yes, uh, Mark uh, Kelscher would be, uh, term would be expiring April 2024, and uh, Stephen Lee uh, would expire June of 2029. So with that being said, if somebody would like to make a motion to support these individuals, I would uh, take that motion at this time. Penny? I will make a motion to um, approve the appointments to the Airport Commission and Board of Review. Thank you, Eric. I'll second the motion. Okay, motion been made and seconded and needed this discussion. Okay, all in favor of said motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Moving on to the um, 6J review of July meeting scheduled July 10th and July 24th. We do have some holidays in there and some extra weeks and uh, some other uh, special days. So, uh, Eric, if you want to touch on that just a little bit. Absolutely. Given that uh, our first meeting in July would be on July 3rd, uh, buttressing right next to July 4th, we're recommending that uh, we move the council meetings in July to July 10th and then July 24th. So that way it's not interfering with your vacation schedules that you may have or may not have or other plans. And then uh, we would return back to our normal council meeting schedule in August. Okay, thank you, Chief. So if that would uh, meet the discretion of the council, if somebody would make a motion um, to approve, the meeting schedule in July, that would be great. Eric. I'll put a motion in to change July's meeting schedule for city council to July 10th and the 24th. Thank you. Is there a second to that motion? Lee? Second the motion. Motion been made and seconded. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor of said motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, thank you. Okay, and that moves us down to budget transfers. There's a number of budget transfers this evening. Um, all necessary to keep the ball rolling. Um, Chief, I don't know if you want to elaborate on it or not, but uh, sure. Go, go ahead. Absolutely. Thank you, Mayor. So we have a variety of budget transfers in here and requests uh, for council for approval between trying to acquire uh, additional Badger books, voting machines for us. Uh, the county is still willing to pay for half the cost. We believe that adding on servers to the, the Badger books would expedite voting when we have our national election next year. We're expecting a, a massive turnout for that and that will help our poll workers there tremendously if we make the purchase this year dunn county will pay for half of them so that pretty darn good deal right there otherwise if we wait until next year then we're paying the full price which will be double than what we asked so we're hoping that that'll get passed 
Uh, we're also looking to replace on a couple of the budget transfers. We're looking for some computer equipment for treasurers, public works, and administration to replace aging computers and also offer the flexibility to work remotely, conferences, et cetera. Uh, and then also we're looking to be replacing some equipment, office equipment and furniture inside of City Hall. And then lastly, the addition, we, we had air conditioning go out in one of our, our maintenance buildings. Be pretty hot. And so we're, we're hoping that we can get approval for that budget transfer as well so we can replace it. We, had, we acquired several bids. A low bid came in with uh, Cedar Falls uh, Heating and AC Incorporated. And we're hoping to receive funding for that so we can make make those repairs. So that's that's that. Great, thank you. So if we want to support, we would do, if we want to support the budget transfers, a uh, motion to entertain this would be good. Penny, I will make a motion to um, support the budget transfers as presented. Thank you. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second that motion. Second by Laura. Any uh, discussion? Roll call vote, please. Yanko? Yes. McCullough? Yes. Schwebs? Yes. Gens? Yes. Schlu? Yes. Erdman? Yes. Sommerfeld? Yes. Luther? Yes. Burstad? Yes. Sutherland? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. And that moves us down to the mayor's report. I'll be as brief as possible. Um, the new uh, city website is launched. I'll let Megan touch on that in a moment. Um, uh, also, I wanted to remind folks of the Ludington Guard Band. Uh, first concert is tomorrow night at 7.30 at uh, Wilson Park, right next door here. Um, the Dunn County recently passed a new ATV UTV regulations, and so we're looking into this for the future, so we'll keep you posted on what direction the city might want to take, um, if any. So uh, we'll keep you posted regarding that. And um, we're going to open it up to communications. And uh, Eric, I'm going to turn it over to you. Sure. So uh, one of the first thing I'm going to start off with, I, I think is just absolutely wonderful news. Uh, Lowell Prangy was uh, awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award by the Wisconsin City and County Managers Association. So he's going to receive that award here towards uh, the end of the month on uh, June 21st, I believe is the day at their award at their uh summer conference luncheon so if there are any is anybody that's that's interested in road tripping with me down there to see the award by all means reach out to me i, I think that that's uh exceptionally well earned and deserved by lowell and uh it was suggested for submission by kevin bruner who was uh, our consultant that helped us in the search for for the administrator and the department of public works and uh and he submitted that uh submitted that award and received it so i just think it's a wonderful thing and i want to make sure to share that and get the date to again june 21st it's at lambeau field in green bay i i really thought it should be at u.s bank stadium uh <laughs> but <laughs> apparently i'm i'm nobody in that decision making process so uh all, also inside of your packets there is a league of municipalities seminar on july 28th at the altoona fish house for local government 101 if there are any older persons that are interested in attending by all means uh, just let me know and we will get you registered to attend it i've taken the 101 on online before a couple of years ago and it contains some pretty good information in it and then uh, another thing uh, we promoted a fella Brendan Ewitz from Water Department to a foreman, effective July 1st. He has been uh, the person that has incorporated the GIS system in our Water Department, which has really upgraded our, our, our ability to understand where our mains are and also to document all the different things that we are doing here in the city. It'll help us understand what we've done in the past, but also more importantly, I think is to help us plan for the future in public work. So amazing job by Brendan, just a very, very well-deserved uh, promotion. And it was referred and approved uh, by uh, Jeremy Hoyt and uh, David Schofield. And then uh, lastly, I'll finish up. I was at a, uh, a conference two weeks ago uh, in Washington, D.C. I was invited to uh, have a discussion in a think tank about uh, how to make recommendations for states and to spend opioid uh, expenditure funds or the opioid settlement funds to write a, a white paper. And we were going to distribute it to the 50 states. 
as a template for how to use it. And, and we were selected and I was selected as a representative for Menominee based on the Project Hope program. And so we described some of the things that we were doing with juveniles and then adults and diversion. And it, it was an amazing couple of days. So really good news that uh, Menominee is being recognized for its efforts in fighting methamphetamine and opioid addiction. Well, and I think uh, Eric is being a little modest uh, because the briefing he gave me from what uh, transpired out there uh, was pretty in depth and pretty intense. And according to um, what uh, Eric had said, we're way ahead of the curve in most situations of what we're doing here, what uh, he has achieved with Project Hope and moving that forward is, is a great thing. And uh, and letting others know that how it's happening and what we're doing here too, I think is, is huge. So that's awesome, thank you. Thank Eric. you, Mayor, appreciate it. Okay, and... Um, I think uh, that brings us down to Dave. I think you had a few things to say, and then we'll let Megan speak besides David. Yeah, and a couple of things. The alternate site irrigation restrictions went into place on June 1st. We did uh, try to do an education campaign with uh, residents on, their, on our Facebook page and with um, our larger users, our industrial users, our commercial users, with some targeted reach outs for folks that use a lot of water that we know use a lot of irrigation water. Um, I have in that Megan will pull up on the screen here, a uh, draft letter that we're going to send folks that if we get complaints about them using uh, irrigation water on, on days in which they're not supposed to be. Uh, I, I'm cognizant that people probably just uh, maybe not see the information, so we're not going to come down on, hard on people. We're trying to trying to educate. The next screen is a, is a graph showing uh, uses. This is back in, uh, in June, July, and August of 2022. So this is last year. One of the things that we've talked about is we need a new well. Um, and what we're trying to do with this alternate site irrigation is try to level out our, our uses. You can see I picked out two weeks here. Uh, we had one uh, Saturday in June uh, that was close to 3.2 million gallons pumped. Uh, the following day, a Sunday, we were closer to 1.8 million gallons. So we have very, very high peaks. Uh, it just it has something to do with the, when people decide they want to water. Uh, it has something to do with the heat uh, that's going on, of course. Um, but what we're trying to do with the alternate side irrigation is trying to to level that out just a little bit. If the if we were able to have half the people water on Saturday and half on Sunday, we'd probably be closer to 2.4 million gallons rather than 3.2 million gallons. Um, similarly, in July, we had another uh, high peak where it was 3.2 to around 2 uh, million gallons. So we're just trying to level that out a little bit. Yes, sir. Um, I guess I the feedback I've gotten from people um, and it's missing from the letter is why we are doing this, not because people seem to feel that we're just telling telling them what to do. And there's that pushback. And when you say, well, because our wells are potentially running at full capacity and you can't put 110% out or stuff breaks, then right. they understand and they go, okay, that makes sense. I'll right. Yeah. And, it, and at the bottom of the screen there, um, you know, at 3.2 million gallons a day, if one of our wells is down, that would require us 27 hours in a day uh, to to catch up. We obviously don't have 27 hours in a day. We we only have 24. So we would be we would be running our water towers down if we get to a certain point. We have to do a boil water notice. So we we can't physically sell water that we don't produce, and that's why that's why we're doing this. If we have uh, all of our wells in service, we're around 17 hours. Um, to pump 3.2 million gallons. That's high. Uh, we'd like to be under 16 hours if we can, um, but it's not uh, It's not a, an emergency if all of our wells are in place. So this right now we're, we're looking at doing this alternate side irrigation restrictions. If one of our wells goes down, if we have a, a, a impeller that, that fails or a, a motor that fails, I will be coming back to you and asking for a total watering ban. Um, we just can't, it, we, we can't, we don't have 27 hours in a day. Um, so if our if we are out of a out of a well, we're going to be having a different discussion. So, trying to just trying to balance things out. I, I I've seen the comments on Facebook, and I understand people feel very strongly that they paid for their water and they can use it whenever they'd like. And I understand that. However, when we don't have water, when we are out of water, that that we can't sell them water we don't have. Okay, Ben, you want to add to that? Dave, correct me if I'm wrong. Other municipalities around you indicated we're doing similar. Um, Every other and some were doing a total water ban. Is yeah, I correct? believe Altoona is every other and Lake Halley is a total watering ban. Yes. Okay. 
Um, yeah, and I don't know how, I mean, I guess we could on the website or otherwise say why we're doing it. I thought we had listed the reason for doing it, but if we, if it's not clear, maybe um, maybe your help in that also. Okay. Okay, so, so we'll add the why wherever we can. That's a good comment. Thank you, David, and please continue. Yeah, and then the next thing is we, we are in the process this week of finishing up our uh, flushing. Uh, we do get a we, get, we do get the why question a lot for flushing as well. Uh, this is not our water main. I want to be very clear. This is a picture that I found online. Um, that material that's on the inside of that water main pipe is what's called tuberculation. It's essentially the what you see in a, a cave. It's a stalactite on the inside of a water main pipe. Um, if that uh, is allowed to build up like it has in this case, obviously we don't get the fire protection we need. We don't get the water pressure that we need in order to serve our customers. So once a year, we do a, a hard flush, and that tries to break off that material that is that is um, solidifying to the inside of the pipe. Uh, it will break off with the flushing that we do. It will also break off in a fire event. And, and in that case, we, we don't have control of where it goes. By doing it once a year in a controlled manner, we open certain valves, we close certain valves, we open certain hydrants to try to flush it out in very specific ways. So um, although it seems kind of random the way we go around town, it is intended to kind of work away from our water sources, away from our towers, and try to clean that out. So just wanted to share that with you folks. If you've had, gotten any calls or complaints about, um, about why we're flushing, that's why. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Good report. Um, Megan, there's a couple things that I'd like to have you speak on. Number one is the, the electronics collection, uh, also our new city website, and then also the grant monies that you just applied and received. So if you could just touch on those issues for me, I appreciate it. Yeah, so I just brought up our new city website um, that launched at 10 a.m. this morning. Um, this was a large effort by a lot of city staff. So every every department has contributed to the launch of this website. Um by going through and updating their pages, um, by working with our vendor um, and then our in our core communications group that kind of helped push this project forward. Um, this has been about an eight month process to get this online. Um, we have tried to look at every single page. Um, it has been an enormous effort, especially in the last um, month or so, but please play around with the website. And if you happen to find things that are broke or not right, let us know because we've been living in this for a very long time and have not, sometimes you get blinders that way. So um, some, we'll have the homepage here um, on the top here. You, you can click, it'll always bring you back to the homepage and then there'll be some headers across the top um, with navigation for folks. Um, it has a very robust search system. So if all else fails, please just go to the search and it should get you where you need to go. Um, there are a few um, graphic navigation buttons to things that we think are going to be the most utilized um, by residents. And then we have a section here where we have a news flash and then a calendar um, with events and meetings, et cetera. And then moving down to the bottom, there's some quick links. This is where you find our city ordinances, um, job opportunities, et cetera. Um, so yeah, that's our new website and looks much better than our old website. It is also um mobile friendly so whatever size device you have whether it's a tablet or a mobile phone um, it should size correctly to the device you're using so you can actually see it and then um, the vendor helps build in all of the ada compliance things which is also a huge um huge part of the project um so that is all maintained through our vendor um, and it kind of the things it makes you do when you're making edits uh, make sure that it's ada compliant for those with disabilities so that's that project. Um, the electronics collection last Thursday evening. Gretchen has a question. Oh, sorry, go ahead. It's not really a question, but thanks for having the um, sign in on top so that people can get notifications because yes. I know I'm going to set that right away. Yes, that so there really is, helps. you can um, create a login account for the website, and then there's a way to, um, you can choose notifications if you'd like updates when city council agendas are posted, or if you're really excited about the water department and want to know when the water department page is updated, you can be notified by text or email. Um, so that's a really great function. Um, we are working on a, a video that we're going to put on Facebook so people can kind of see that functionality and how to sign up, um, et cetera. Well, it just sprang to mind. Is there a possibility to have um, that be a place where people, they're like when 
boards and commissions and whatnot have openings that people that might be interested, it pops on there. Um, and volunteer opportunities in the city could pop through there as well. Just a thought. Yeah, there's there's a lot of functionality that we're kind of just starting to scratch the surface. Uh, one of the, there's forms that you can fill out. If we build forms from instead of a paper kind of digital form, it'll be a form through the website and then they fill it out and then it gets emailed to the correct people um, with it already filled out in the data already in there. So that's something that we're looking to move forward in the future here. Um, we just focused on trying to get the shell of the website first, but. Good, thank you. And Megan, continue yeah. please. So our electronics collection last Thursday went really, really well. Um, it was super hot and we got a lot of electronics. So we filled an entire semi double stacked. So like floor to ceiling with pallets um, of electronics and then probably about a half to two thirds of a second semi um, with electronics um, estimating around 350 people. Um, we weren't able to count super accurately because we were all schlepping electronics out of people's cars. Um, so it was very well received. We had lots of great compliments, um, hoping to potentially do it again in the future. Um, talked with our, our representative from the company that um, did it, and they were very pleased with it and would like to work with us again in the future. So that's something we will definitely keep in mind. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the big news, Megan, go ahead. Um, so the carbon reduction program grant application that I submitted a couple of months ago with council approval to update all of our municipal street lighting to LED has been funded by the DOT. So um, it's a grant award of around $138,000 and a total project cost of around $184,000. So starting the paperwork to try to accept that. So we'll be bringing this back to council next meeting for formal approval for us to accept the grant and sign the paperwork. And that's uh, that's just a tribute to your hard work. And thank you, Megan, for all the efforts. And uh, Menominee is doing amazing right now in all the areas. Um, if you look across the city, uh, there isn't one one um, department that is uh, lacking in, in moving things forward for the city of Menominee. So we appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, anything else from Dave or Megan or the chief, Ben? Uh, communications, I will open it up to council. If you have anything to communicate, we could take that at this time. Yes, Laura. I, I think a bunch of us got an, an email from someone about um, requesting trying to get a YMCA here. Um, and I don't, we haven't discussed it at all. I don't know what we need to do yeah. about that. Well, we've been talking about it administratively and Eric, maybe you can. Sure, I, I can uh, hopefully expound upon that a little bit. We, we've we been contacted by, by the YMCA about potentially bringing one here to this area, what a partnership might look like. So we're on just preliminary discussions on that. And then we've had a couple of members of the community that have reached out too about their interest of wanting to have a YMCA to try to have increased programming and stuff that's not necessarily accessible in this area. So we're having some discussions as to, okay, if we do have one, where would be a good good location for it, what kind of capital campaign would be needed to be to do that because communities have to raise the funds in order to purchase it and bring it. I came from a community that did that about 25 years ago, and it, it was quite the undertaking, but it's it's not an impossible thing. So we'll look at some, some sites and then see if maybe there's a partnership availability between the city, YMCA, and maybe some of our uh, private partnerships that are out there. So we're on very early conversations. So if you are getting contacted by constituents, you can tell them that the city is looking at that, looking at possibilities and what that might look like for location and overall footprint. Good. You're very welcome. Thank you, Eric. Okay, uh, any other communications? Okay, we're going to close that portion out and move on with the rest of our meeting. That brings us down to claims. If we want to pay the bills, uh, there was an updated uh, email sent out uh, regarding the claims. So, Rylan? Uh, I would make a motion to pay the updated claims list as presented. Thank you. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second Rylan's motion. Okay, thank you. Motion was made and seconded. Any discussion? Roll call vote. McCullough? Yes. Schweppes? Yes. Gens? Yes. Schlu? Yes. Erdman? Yes. Sommerfeld? Yes. Luther? Yes. Burstead? Yes. Sutherland? Yes. Yanko? Yes.
Okay, thank you. That brings us down to licenses. It's renewal time of the year. And so a lot of people are, are uh, on the license list this evening. So, uh, Kate, do you need anything to add to that? I mean, it's not a comprehensive list. We'll have another list next time as well, um, but this is the majority of them. Okay, good, thank you. So if anybody would like to make a motion to support this, Jeff Luther, go ahead, please. Oh, sorry. Um, I, does, I need to abstain from voting being that I'm on the list. I don't know if I have to do that before the motion or after. Uh, right now is a good time, okay, so perfect. Penny will be abstaining. Yes. Thank you. Um, I had a question first. Did uh, the city of Menominee do the police department do a compliance check this spring and were the results put out or on who passed and who failed? I'll switch this over to the chief. So that sure. was probably before I got back on board. They they did do another check and I just received the report today. So a copy of that report will be forwarded out to your June 19th council pack, which will have who who passed and and who did not. And then okay. what kind of follow up will be done. I'll make a motion to approve the license list as presented tonight. Okay, thank you. Motion's been made. Eric, go ahead, please. That, motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All in fav favor of said motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um, we do not have a closed session this evening. Uh, we had a really good meeting this evening. Uh, Corey? Cody? <laughs> I'll move to adjourn. Cody? <laughs> Cody moves to adjourn. Is there a second to that motion? <laughs> I'll second the motion to adjourn. Okay, motion been made and seconded. All in favor of said motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Have a great evening. Good.